How are you everyone? I am Sprogam BR. I am from Brazil, as you can tell from the nickname, and I'm the creator of Lorita. When I started using Discord in early 2017, I created a private bot to, for my Discord server that was for my Minecraft server. So I had a Minecraft server. So because we're trying to migrate to Discord because Skype sucks, everyone knows that. And at the time I decided, okay, let's migrate to Discord. So I created a bot because one of the things that I really like about Discord is that you could create your own bot. It was something that was officially supported. So I created a bot. One of the first features that I created was trying to synchronize chat between Skype and Discord because a lot of people didn't want to migrate to Discord because they thought, oh, it's a new thing. I don't want to use it just to talk with my, with my Minecraft friends. But I decided to kept going on Discord and I started developing new features to that private bot. Mostly stuff like, oh, welcome message or stuff like, oh, um, use a common and it creates like a fun picture with the avatars of the user in the server and stuff like that. And because I was developing new features that weren't related to my Minecraft server on that private bot, some people started asking me, hey, can I add your, your bot to my server? Because there's a lot of cool features that I want to use that would be useful on my server. So I started thinking, hmm, what if, what if I created my own public bot that anyone could use? And one of the reasons that a lot of people wanted to use my bot is that it was in Portuguese, because of course I'm from Brazil, my Minecraft server is also for the Brazilian audience, so my bot, my private bot also was. So a lot of people wanted to use my bot because it was in Portuguese, because at the time, while nowadays a lot of bots have multi-language support, at the time I think the only popular bot that had a Portuguese translation that was good was Tatsu, which at the time was called Tatsumaki, and so a lot of people wanted to use my bot. So I decided, okay, so let's create a public bot that anyone can use. And I called it Lorita. And that's the story how I created it. While I don't use other bots than other than my own, one of the bots that I really like and inspire my work is Tatsu. Why? Because it is so well made. Every time that I see a Tatsu post, like those announcements that they do, I always think about how can we cancel Tatsu for being so professional and well made because they are just showing, hey, this is how a good bot is made. All of the other bots are trash. We do everything in a very professional and cool way. So I think that Tatsu is one of the like good bots that exist nowadays because it's so well made and professional. Especially the graphics. The graphics are like chef keys are so good. A lot of people think that like hosting and running a bot is easy and cheap. Every bot developer can agree with this. Like your bot goes down, a lot of people come with to you and say, oh, but I can host, host my server and I don't pay anything and my bot never goes down. So that's why your bot sucks. You can't keep it online because they don't know that like having a big bot it's not that easy and you need to pay a lot of time because people use like those free hosts like Heroku or Glitch or stuff like that so they think it is free so it is so easy to host a bot but when you have like a big bot you need to pay a lot a lot of expenses in hosting and that running a bot is not easy too because you have like oh you need to do sharding oh sometimes Discord have a random issue that only affects big, big bots and your bot goes down and you don't know what to do you need to complain to the to the API team, to them to see, oh, hey, what's going on? My bot can't, is not online. But at the same time, there's a lot of like small bot developers that like, oh, but my bot never goes down. That's why my bot is better than Lorit or is better than Tatsu or better than Welcomer or stuff like that. I am like the jack of all trades, master of known. Because like I do a lot of things, like I do development. That's like, I love programming. So that's like what I do the most. But in the beginning, of course, you needed to do like to do the chart itself, like because Lorita is not just a bot, it's also a charter. So I needed to like to to create a design for her. I, like I made the drawing myself because like there wasn't a lot of other people that could help me with drawing. And also I didn't have a lot of money to expand, like trying to commission an, an artist. So I did a lot of things. One of the good things of trying to do everything yourself is that you end up learning a lot of things because you need to learn like, oh, how to use Photoshop, how to develop like something. You need to learn programming. You need to, how to draw. You need to learn a lot of things. Uh, but of course, 
when you start to grow, you can't like do everything yourself. You end up burning out or you're going to take a long time to do something. I have already talked about branching out, but the issue with branching out is like, okay, I want to support another chat platform. But the problem is, is that you end up putting a lot of more work. Of course, all of the good developers here may think about, oh, but you can create like an interface and then you can create implementations for each chat platform. So you don't need to write the same command twice, but that's a lot of work. And that work you could use it by like trying to improve your bot on Discord itself, because trying to do that will use a lot of your time. I tried doing that. I ended up scrapping all of it because it was so much work and everything was so much harder to support. Okay, I need to support a new Discord feature, do everything in an abstract way so I could support all the chat platforms, even though no one was asking to me to support Lorita on like Telegram or like Gilded or Twitter or stuff like that. So I ended up scrapping. But one thing that I want to do is trying to branch out her brain to other like platforms. As I said before, Lorita is not just a bot, she's also a, a character. So I want to branch out her brand by doing stuff like trying to sell merchandise, trying to create content related to her, or maybe even making her a VTuber. Who knows? I'm still not sure what I'll do with her. Scaling is hard. Because like originally Lorita was like a monolith, so it was everything running on a single JVM process. So she was growing, I needed to do something about it. So what the first thing that I did was like trying to split her in multiple process, which honestly is not hard if you plan it for it, which is something that I didn't do. So it was harder to do that. I needed those stuff like splitting up in multiple process. So I could do stuff like rolling restarts or if some cluster, like cluster is like a, a process that has multiple shards in it, multiple gateway shards. Um, if, if one cluster dies, then only that shards are affected instead of the entire bot. So like issues, example, like uh, memory leaks won't affect every single shard at the same time. The hardest thing of scaling, in my opinion, is trying to do updates. Why? Because if you try to like, oh, I want to do an update, I have like a pretty cool update here. You try to deploy the update to your bot, then your bot needs to restart. It needs to re-identify and needs to do all of that stuff. And the problem with that is that it gets boring because you think, oh my God, I need to do an update. And if I do the update, the, all of the shards will go down for like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes and so on and so forth. And we end up, oh, okay, I'm not going to do an update today because I don't, I don't want to deal with people saying, oh, your bot is down, your bot sucks. So I think the hardest part is trying to figure out a way that you can deploy updates to your bot without having a lot of downtime. Which it is something that Discord is working on because if you see interactions over, over HTTP, you can do an update to your bot, at least the slash comments and interaction of your bot without, without taking all of that time to restart all of the shards. And of course the session limit, because if you restart your bot so many times in a day, your bot gets the token reset. About the tech stack, one of the things that I didn't change a lot was that originally Lorita was made in Java using JDA and nowadays, She's now in Kotlin. I migrated like three months after creating her because I want to try Kotlin, which also runs on the JVM. So I didn't need to rewrite everything. And nowadays I still use JDA, but I'm, I'm also testing a bit of Cord, which is a library for Kotlin, which I do use most of the REST client that they have because it's so good. So now I'm to like trying some stuff, trying to rewrite some things to make updates easier and so I can like work more on the bot by making new features without worrying about, oh my God, downtime. I don't want downtime, please. I haven't hired any developers because I think while it would be good, I don't think that I really need it right now. And because it would be hard to find someone that like shares the vision of what I want to Lorita to be and stuff like that. But moderation is something that is so important even though you think oh but i have a bot so why would i need to care about moderation stuff i care about my bot 
Why is not development more important than a moderation? Because if you don't have good people in your staff, you are going to spend your time trying to solve like, oh, you need to solve this problem in your server, like in your bot support or community server, or, or you need to like to spend time trying to help people with like questions about your bot when that time that you are spending trying to solve problems like like fights between users in your bot support slash community server you could spend that time developing your bot by making your bot better and because like i think that anyone that moderates a server knows that like sometimes we are trying to do something and then someone says Oh my god, you need to solve this problem right now in this server. And then you're going to spend like hours trying to solve like a fight between users or try to solve like, or someone is breaking the rules and then you need to solve that problem when like the rules that they are breaking is something so convoluted, something stuff like, oh, the user sent something like a personal information about some another user but the other user also sent it like months before so the other user thought that it was something that they, he could do so you are going to spend like hours trying to solve that problem when you could use your try time developing the bot make the bot better so that's why you need to have good moderators on your team but the problem with hiring moderation moderators is trying to find someone that is, is useful like someone that you can trust what i do is trying getting users that are active in my bots community server because if they are active if they help users if they do the, all of that stuff i think they are trustworthy i i read try doing like forms for anyone like oh if you want to be a moderator build this form and open to everyone i didn't have any good results with that so i scrapped that and now i hire moderators by picking active users in the community server and if they are good, then we put them as a support role so they can't like ban people. They just can help users using our ticket system on our support server by like helping people answer questions about read or they have problems. They can help those people. And then if they are doing a pretty good job, then we promote them to moderators. You want to make new features, but you are held back by like tech tap. Tech? Debt. I don't know how to say that, but it's when your your code is so old that you need like you need to refactor your code just so you can implement new features. So your the stuff that you need wants to do gets held back, and your community says, well, "Hey, where is the new feature that you said that you're going to do?" And you say, "Oh, I can't do that because my code sucks. I need to improve it." And then people start like, "Oh, okay." And then one month passes, two months pass, three months passes. And then they start getting, mm, where's the new feature? And then they they get like, oh, I, I'm going to use another bot. So like try to keep your content fresh. The, the hardest part is trying to make new features because if your bot has a lot of crappy code that requires a lot of refactoring just so you can implement a new feature, then you're going to get into trouble because you aren't going to keep up with the suggestions and the new features that you want to make. So users get bored or they get Oh, I don't want to use robot anymore because they're taking so long to create just a simple feature. In fact, there's a lot of features that I'm planning for Lorita, but I can't do it because her code is messy and I still need to fix it. I need to refactor. I think that one thing that you need to do is, of course, solve a problem that someone has. But one of the other things that I want to share is something like, okay, you are, we want to create a bot. You see a feature that another bot has, example, like Tatsu profile command. What you need to do is try to think, how can I put my own spin on it? How can I make it my own? Because if you just copy some another bot, people will just think, okay, your bot has a profile command, but why? Why would I use your bot if I could just use a Tatsu? And of course, you need to do something that makes you want to use your own bot. A lot of small bot developers makes bot with like, oh, my bot has like a ban command, stuff like that. And then they wonder why you, no one uses my bot because your bot doesn't have any unique features. Why someone would use your bot if they could use any of the other bots that also have a ban command or like a ping command or stuff like that. You need to think about an original idea that would make, oh, okay. 
that idea is cool and I want to have it on my server because I never seen another bot with that before. And of course, it doesn't need to be a 100% original idea. You can see another feature that another bot has and just try to make it better. Try to think, okay, this bot has this feature, but I can make it better. I can put my own spin on it and I can make it with features that the original bot doesn't have. Because if you just create a bot that only has like the every common that all bots have, like pen or ping or stuff like that, no one will, will use your bot. They will prefer using a more well-known bot. If your friends can add your bot, that's a good thing. If they are in a big server, because if they are then to like, oh, I will add to my private server that only has him and the bot. That doesn't help a lot by growing your bot, right? But when I started developing Lorita and I made her public, some of my Minecraft friends, because I had and still have a Minecraft server, they added it to their servers and one of the users was in a big server. So he requested the staff, hey, can you add that my friend's bot? And they added it and they started using the bot and they liked it. So that helped a lot with growth. And another thing that I think is also good for growth is thinking about like, okay, I'm in this big server and I see that they have an issue with something. Uh, example like oh um i was now a real life example um the server owner always po posts his youtube videos manually he could automate that because sometimes he forgets to post so what i did was creating like a feature that the user could say okay i want to post all of the new videos of this youtube channel to this channel on discord and i said to the to the staff here hey why don't you use my bot to notify the the new videos of the channel of the server owner because he sometimes he forgets so he ends up losing some of the views that he could have and they decided to use that that feature of my bot and they liked it so i think that one of the things that you could do don't be like some random people like that says oh, that my bot no don't do that because that's annoying and that's spam but if you can if you're in a server and you see that the server has so like the moderation team has an issue with something or if the users are complaining about something that could be solved with your bot or if you could program something in your bot to solve that issue i think you could do it and then just say to the staff hey my bot can solve that issue if I did it, I could help you set up the bot and stuff like that. But if you don't want it, that's okay. If you are trying to be a bot developer first, you don't don't expect that your bot to like blow up overnight. It takes a long time to grow a bot. Make a bot if you want to. Don't make because you think that you're going to be rich. You're going like to, to be famous. No, that's not going to happen. Like you can earn a lot of money from your bot. But that takes a long time. If you're just thinking about the money, you're going to burn out. You're going to like, I don't want to make a bot anymore. And another thing is that if you're going to make a bot, make it in a way that makes you happy. What do I mean by that? A lot of people that I know make a bot in like, oh, I will, I will make a bot with like in JavaScript or in Python, just because those are the most user language even though they already know other languages, they just don't know that there are libraries for that other language. Because when I say like, oh, I use Kotlin or Java to create a bot, uh, people get like, what? What? I never heard about that language. I wanted, I made up my bot in Java because I already knew Java and I like Java. Then I migrated to Kotlin because I like it Kotlin. I, I still like Kotlin. So I think that one of the things that we need to think is that First, if you're going to make a bot, see all of the programming language that you can use. See what is better for you, what, what suits you, what makes you happy to use it. Because I know a lot of people that were just using JavaScript just because it's the most popular language that they know. And I think stuff to plug, I don't really have. I have like, I have my bot, Lorita. I also have my Minecraft server, Sparkly Power. And I think that's it. And of course, good luck developing a bot.